presentation. Um, so we have them presenting on growth mindset, nurture your well-being, and how to use positive psychology skills to evoke positive emotions, self-compassion, and self-care. So Himadri Sharma identifies as a second generation bilingual Hindi, Urdu, English, cisgender, uh, South Asian American woman and daughter of Asian Indian immigrants. She is currently a fifth year doctoral candidate with the Department of Counseling Clinical School Psychology at the University of California, Santa Barbara, working with Dr. Andres Consoli. Mm -hmm. She has a variety of professional experiences, including a previous career in business and has worked internationally, both in business and psychology. Her current work focuses on serving minoritized groups with an emphasis on South Asian and South Asian American communities. And we also have Hava Nirenberg. She is a doctoral candidate in the Department of Counseling and Clinical Psychology, also at UCSB. Her research focuses on promoting recovery and thriving for those who have experienced trauma, as well as how to provide tailored psychological support for individuals in helping professions. Hava currently works as a counselor at New Beginnings Counseling Center and as a graduate student clinician at UCSB's Mind and Behavior Assessment Clinic. And prior to studying psychology, she worked as a nonprofit program manager overseeing food aid programs for refugees and other vulnerable people in Africa, Asia, and the Middle East. She holds an MA in counseling psychology and an MS in project management. So now I will turn it over to Himadri and Hava. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you. Thank you so much for that introduction, um, Melissa. And thank you all for being here. We're really excited to um, be talking about this topic. This is something Hava and I have been working on for a while now. So we're really excited to get to present this to you all. Um, and, and kind of work together and just going out and starting this journey around growth mindset and positive psychology. So before we get into the, the nitty gritty of what we're going to talk about and the details of, of what we want to share, we we're curious to hear um, what people already know about positive psychology. So we're going to do a quick break room, um, breakout room session about like five minutes. And in your groups, I would, you know, we'd like you to just discuss what are some of the things that you've heard about positive psychology, any things that you know about positive psychology right now, and maybe you don't know anything and that's okay. So what do you think of when you think of, when you hear those words together, positive psychology, um, and then we're going to come back into the larger group and take a minute and talk about it. Um, I don't know if this was already said, but coming from a, a strengths based perspective rather than um, mm -hmm. the negatives. Yeah, coming from a strengths-based perspective rather than coming from more of a deficit model. Yeah. So yeah, those are a lot of really great things. Like um, as you're talking, as you're describing the different thoughts and the different perceptions you've had of positive psychology, it's pretty accurate. There's a lot of different tools. I'm hearing a lot of different tools coming from a strengths-based approach, working towards improvements and increased well-being. So a lot of these things do apply in positive psychology. And so, you know, positive psychology, it really focuses on conditions and processes that contribute to optimal functioning. So what does that really mean? I mean, optimal functioning, I think a lot of times it can be this, it can be this expectation. And at the same time, it's something that's very, very personal. What feels, uh, what feels optimal to me and my functioning and my well-being is not going to be the same as for other people, right? Like our, our well-being will look different and what we need looks different. And so positive psychology really does try to focus on that and saying that, okay, the way you engage in, in well-being, the way you engage in evoking positive emotions might look different for each person. And, but with that, the goal is how do we increase well-being? And it really focuses on trying to engage in things that are meaningful to the person. So meaningful activities, experiences that help bring positive emotions to that individual. Um, and it really focuses on the idea of flourishing. So what do we as individuals need to help us flourish and live the life that we want to live in a meaningful way that is contributing to to well-being while not at the same time while also acknowledging that there's going to be points where there will be suffering there will be points where we're not feeling great 
And that's okay. That's a natural part of the human process. Um, and so there's different aspects of flourishing that positive psychology focus on. One is for, is focusing on emotional well-being. So really focusing on the positive effect and quality of life that you're living. Um, then it also focuses on psychological well-being. So this is really focusing on self-acceptance, personal growth, you know, purpose of life, those type of things, autonomy, your relationship with others. So again, very, very per like personalized. It's very much about you. Um, and then there's social well-being. And this is now how do we connect with others? So we need all these aspects to flourish and social well-being is, it could be around social acceptance. It could be around social contribution. How are we contributing to our communities? How are we connecting with our communities? How are we integrating with our communities? Um, so it definitely looks at these main aspects of flourishing and trying to find ways to help meet each of these needs. So, um, an a, a, a supervisor I once had, Dr. Con Kali Conley, um, he would do this great demonstration when he would talk about positive psychology. So I want to give him full credit for this, um, where he would talk about the difference between kind of other forms of psychology and other approaches to psychology and the way positive psychology really focuses on it. I think a lot of times when people think of positive psychology, they think of, oh, it's only about like good emotions and you're, you don't want to think about the bad ones. That's not completely true. Um, positive psychology really tries to look at, it tries to look at the human experience in a way that is moving towards a growth model and a strengths-based model, which I, I remember someone mentioning. Um, and it is trying to look at a strengths-based model and moving away from it, the deficit model that we see in a lot of other areas of medicine, where we, um, more of that medical based model of we're trying to get rid of distress and positive psychology the concepts really say that just stress and suffering is a natural part of being it's something that we're all we all go through there's going to be times that, that we're anxious or that we're going to get angry or we're gonna um we might get in a fight with a with a loved one or we might have a disagreement um we might be disappointed and those are very very natural human experiences those are very natural human emotions that we're going to have and if we try to spend a lot of time trying to get rid of those moments of suffering or that experience of distress it's going to be this endless loop because we can never truly get rid of it. So positive psychology says, well, why don't we shift and we focus on well-being? And a lot of times what happens is when we have a lot of things going on in our, in our lives that, is, that are distressing, that are stressful, that are you know, causing suffering, it feels like they take up a lot of space. And with positive psychology, with the shift towards well-being, our goal is, well, how do we increase well-being? We're not working on decreasing the suffering and, and distress necessarily, but we're increasing well-being. And relative to that, suddenly that distress doesn't feel like it's taking up as much space. Um, so really working towards that strengths-based model, really working towards what are the tools we can create for ourselves to help give ourselves moments of reprise, give ourselves moments of positive emotions um, so that we can encourage growth, personal growth. So we're curious, kind of thinking about this, what are some things that you are already doing that promote your well-being? So, or what are some ideas that you have? And you can share it in the chat. If you feel comfortable, you're welcome to share it, um, you know, verbally. But there's already a lot of stuff that I'm sure you're doing that promotes positive emotions, that promotes your well-being. So what are some of those things? So I see in the chat, people are sharing um, yoga, long walks, journaling, indoor plants, definitely napping, you know, reminding myself to minimize multitasking, staying present in the moment, um, going to my garden, being with my cat, really pet therapy is a great therapy, I would say, um, focusing on nature, meditating, you know, exercise, physical hobbies, creating boundaries, definitely puppy playtime, more of that pet therapy, always, I say always a great, great thing to do. I have, I have two dogs. Um, so firm believer. Um, 
yeah, music, motorcycling, you know, just so, so many things that you are doing already. And these are all really great ways to promote well-being. These are ways that you're able to evoke positive emotions um, and really great tools that you've already created for yourself. And as we kind of talk more about positive psychology, um, we're going to talk about, well, some of the, the ideas that they have of taking these tools and how do we take our toolbox? We kind of think of it as this self-care well-being toolbox and how do we expand it? How do we add to it? So right now your toolbox, maybe it has a screwdriver and it has a hammer. Well, maybe you need a Phillips screwdriver now. So how do we put that in there too? Or maybe you need, you need a jigsaw. Let's put that in there. So it's about expanding your toolbox, but it's not necessarily about getting rid of the tools you already have because you already have so many great tools. And so a major theory in positive psychology is around PERMA theory. And this is the idea, this is, this is another way to kind of promote well-being. And it really states that there are five major building blocks that helps enable flourishing. So like I said in the beginning, big part of positive psychology is we're trying to find ways to help ourselves flourish, help us help ourselves live meaningful lives in according to the way we want to live them. And, you know, a good life looks different for each person. So the route to flourishing is different for each person. And which I think is such a great thing about positive psychology that there's these ideas and the way you relate to these different things can be different. And that's okay, that's how it's supposed to be because that's what's gonna make your life meaningful. And um, so kind of the first one in, in PERMA theory is the idea of positive emotions. So this is, this is really a route to well-being. It, it's about increasing those positive emotions about the past. So I heard someone mention gratitude when they think of positive psychology. So positive emotion can be evoked by gratitude, thinking about those past experiences. It can be also, you can also use forgiveness as a way. So how do we bring forgiveness into our life to help bring positive emotions connected to our past? It's about bringing positive emotions into our present. So that's including mindfulness activities, meditation, ways to really be, to savor the present moment. Um, and we're going to be doing some of these activities. How is going to be walking us through these activities? So you're going to get a chance to practice them today. Um, and then the next piece, the the next piece around positive emotions is how do we bring positive emotions into our future? So how do we evoke like hope? How do we evoke optimism? How do we evoke um, the idea of looking forward to something? So having something to look forward to. So it's about kind of increasing positive emotions, not just throughout your life, but also through the span of your life. The next piece is engagement. So this is really the idea of how do you engage in activities in, and what activities do you feel like you're able to use your skills, to use your strengths. Um, and it's something that calls for your attention so that you can, you can really produce this idea of flow. Um, and so has anyone heard of the idea of flow before? Okay, I see a few hands in the air. Yeah, so flow is this idea of like, you know, the idea of being in the zone. And sometimes we can be in flow when we're doing something that's enjoyable. That could be like, like for example, dancing, going on a walk. We can also hit flow and be in the idea in flow where we're really engaged in the activity where we're, you know, we don't even realize time is passing sometimes. And that could be when we're working. Um, there's a really, really great, um, pick, you know, Pixar movie that I think it's Pixar called Soul. If you haven't seen it, highly recommend it. But they bring up the idea of flow in there um, where you kind of almost, it's like you hit this other state when you're, when you're in flow. You're able to kind of disengage with other things and really engage um, in the activity that you're doing right at hand. Um, and like I said, that can happen in a lot of different aspects of your life. It could be pleasurable things. It could be work-related things, but it's something that's able to engage your, all, your full self. Um, relationships is another place that's going to help promote positive, um, your positive emotions, well-being. And this is how do you find support from and connection from others? And that connection 
is very healing. So relationships can, you know, positive psychology really sees relationships as, a, as, an, as an opportunity for healing. Not all our relationships are healing. So it's about finding those relationships that are healing, that you're able to engage in, where you are able to get, um, you're able to be yourself. You're able to promote that, that life that you want to move to, those relationships that are meaningful for you. Um, so it's not about engaging that all of your relationships are going to be healing. And at the same time, being open to the relationships that are healing. Um, the next one is meaning. So trying to find meaning. So in your life, and this can be, this is, you know, a, a lot of times promoted from trying to engage in something that's bigger than ourselves. It could be religion. It could be family. It could be justice. It could be social justice issues. It could be your community, but something that makes you feel connected um, and gives you meaning to what you're doing and meaning to the life that you're living. And this is again, very, very personal. It could be a cause that you're really passionate about. Um, it could be being a parent. It could be taking care of your pet. Like there's a lot of things in our life that gives us, that give us meaning. And so taking time to reflect on that and see, okay, what are the things in my life that I want to do that give me meaning? And then the last one is accomplishment. So this is really trying to pursue different activities, different situations where you feel it, you feel a sense of accomplishment, you feel achievement. This could be setting a goal. It could be a goal that's work related. It could be a personal goal. It could be, I want to, I want to make sure I garden for a half an hour every day. Like it could be any type of goal that you want to set for yourself. Um, it could be trying to learn a new skill. So trying to increase mastery and just really for its own sake. So mastery for its own sake. So maybe there's a language that you're interested in learning. So learning that language um, and that could help kind of feed that need for accomplishment and that promotes your well-being. So positive psychology pulls from a lot, a lot of different um, a lot of different type of uh, it, orientations and backgrounds. And one specific kind of approach in positive psychology is the idea of goal-focused positive psychology. And this is really, it's a type of therapy. Um, and it's something that I have found, I, I, it's something I like to pull for it from as a clinician, um, but even personally, and it's this idea of, of it's a strengths-based idea of how do we grow. It really focuses on individual strengths, positive emotions, and then self-selected goals. So so they're again really moving towards that personalization of my life and making it meaning, meaningful for me and how that looks for me. And so a big piece of, of, of kind of the way we do that is this idea of broaden and build. And so I was saying earlier that you know you have that toolbox and it's about expanding that toolbox and it's completely kind of built off of this theory of broaden and build. And the idea is that when you are going to be engaging in things that bring you positive emotions, such as feeling joy, love, commitment, um, happiness, interest, excitement, that's going to broaden your mindset and allow it to be more open to engage in, into incorporating that activity as a tool of self-care. So you're gonna broaden your mindset and then you're gonna build and develop those physical and mental resources that you can use at a later time. And this it eventually, as you keep doing that, it's going to help you grow and expand. So you're able to have more occurrences of positive emotions. So for example, say you start trying going on a walk every evening and it's bringing you a lot of positive emotions. Well, you broaden your perspective, you broaden yourself to, oh, okay, like walks could be maybe something I, I enjoy doing. And then you can build it as a tool of like, okay, I'm going to add walks into my, into the way I'm going to take care of myself. So when I'm feeling maybe down or I'm feeling, you know, I'm feeling stressed out, then I'm going to go on a walk and this is a way I can take care of myself. And that's going to then transform. And now your, your toolbox just grew. And so that's kind of the concept of broaden and build is this idea of using positive emotions to increase your, your repertoire of self-care. And a lot of what kind of is, is doing what we're kind of doing with all of that is we're trying, we're setting these goals that are what, what we say in positive psychology, especially in goal-focused positive psychology are 
approach goals. And a lot of times we'll have avoidant goals. So when, when I say a, um, avoidant goals, which is the opposite of approach goal, what do you think? What do people think of? What are some, some ideas that you have of, of, of that? Avoidant goals are really around the, the idea of, of trying to avoid something. So as people are saying, like avoiding unhealthy foods or breaking, avoiding a bad habit um, or saying, I don't want to feel sad. I'm going to avoid feeling sad. I want to stop feeling sad. And a lot of times the reason avoidant goals are very difficult, it's hard to really know if you're achieving that goal, right? Because it's like, for example, the example that was given in the chat, avoiding unhealthy foods. Okay, you're going to avoid unhealthy foods, but say one day you decide you want to eat some burger and bread. And now did you not achieve your goal or did you maybe achieve your goal because you avoided the other days? It's really hard to measure. And also it really, it can be, um, it can be very disheartening and demotivating when that goal is not met completely. So in positive psychology and goal-focused positive psychology, we're like, okay, let's turn that around. How about we move towards approach goals? What are the things we want in our life? What are the things we want, like the results we're looking for? So, you know, moving towards a model that is like, okay, for example, if you have the, you, you want, you want to feel less lonely. One example of, of, of turning that to approach goal could be, I want to have more friends because I believe that would make me enjoy my life more. So you're, you have your approach motivation, the motivation that's pushing you and something that you can measure. I want to have more friends. Because every time you make a new friend, you'd be like, oh, I have one more friend. It's something you can work towards. It's something that, e and each time you're accomplishing it, it's evoking positive emotions, which is going to keep you motivated. And it's going to, it's kind of this, it's, you know, avoiding goals, I feel like can sometimes put us in a vicious cycle and, and an approach goal can kind of put us in this positive growth set cycle of, okay, what are the things I want to work towards? Um, so real quick, can anyone like, think, and you can put it in the chat, like what would be an example of, a, of an approach goal? Um, so that's a, that's a, these are some of the, the basics of positive psychology, and we want to make sure that you have time to practice. So I'm going to hand it over to Hava, and we're going to do some skills practice. I also see another one saying swimming in a pool or at the beach. Yeah, moving towards, I want to swim more. I want to learn this skill. All of these are really, really great. Um, kind of rephrases, reframes towards more of an approach goal. All right, so we're gonna move, I'm gonna hand it over to Hava and we're gonna move into the more practice part. Okay, thank you so much, Himaji. So now that you have some background, some theory on what positive psychology is, we wanted to give you uh, some opportunities to practice. So we're gonna do two exercises together um, and we'll be really interested to hear what you think of these. So we're going to start with loving kindness. And uh, loving kindness comes from Buddhist traditions, and it's part of broader mindfulness practices. So if you've um, read something about Buddhism, you might have heard the term metta, um, and that's the same term for loving kindness. And what these are is they're specific exercises to help cultivate these, uh, these kind of positive mental states, particularly um, unselfishness and unconditional kindness to all beings. And as Himaji was explaining, these practices can really help to broaden and enhance positive emotions that you're already feeling um, and lessen negative emotional states. And they also have this wonderful benefit of helping to increase empathy and compassion, um, both toward yourself, but also toward other people. And so there's some really promising research about out there um, on loving kindness. For those of you who are interested, um, you know, it shows a lot of promise for even helping to alleviate some clinical symptoms, including the effects of depression and anxiety and chronic pain. So just a general good practice to help build well-being and, and also you know, possibly some other health benefits. So we wanted to just do one of these together. We're going to play a short recording um, and we invite you just to, to come do this exercise with us. It's only about six minutes, but if you could just you know, put aside multitasking your email and just be fully present and then we'll, we'll discuss a little bit about how it was. So you could start that, Himaji. That would yes. be great. I think I forgot to share sound. So let me just do that real quick. <laughs> Good 
meditation for self-compassion. So we'll practice this sitting down. So whether that's on a cushion on the floor or in a chair, we want to find an upright posture. And if sitting upright is not possible for you, if you have a lot of pain or otherwise it's difficult, um, we can also practice this laying down. And if we are laying down, we may just want to have our eyes gently open so that we don't fall asleep during this. If you're in a chair, let's bring our feet uh, flat on the floor and our hands relaxed and in our lap. And also our, our back will be upright, not leaning back on the chair, but leaning forward a little bit with our ears in line with our shoulders, our shoulders in line with our hips. So this open and upright position with our eyes either gently closed or if you prefer, just gently open with a soft gaze. I'm taking a few moments to bring our attention to our breath, to arrive in this time, in this place right now. And we'll start to repeat a wish of well-being for ourselves. And we can silently say to ourselves, May I have happiness, health, safety, and deepest well-being. May I have happiness, health, safety, and deepest well-being. Offering this gentle wish of well-being to ourselves. May I have happiness, health, safety, and deepest well-being. Silently repeating this to ourselves. May I have happiness, health, safety, and deepest well-being. May I have happiness, health, safety, and deepest well-being. Letting these words wash over us. This gentle wish for well-being for ourselves. May I have happiness, health, safety, and deepest well-being. Anytime we find ourselves distracted, which happens, we just gently observe that we're distracted and then come back to the present moment and to this wish for ourselves. May I have happiness, health, safety, and deepest well-being. Now we're going to expand this wish outward to all beings in all directions, everyone. And we can say silently, may all beings have happiness, health, safety, and deepest well-being. May all beings have happiness, health, safety and well-being, sending out this wish of love to everyone in all directions. May all beings have happiness, health, safety, and deepest well-being. May all beings have happiness, health, safety, and deepest well-being. And we know that compassion for others begins with compassion for ourselves. And so that's why we focus on that. We focus on 
cultivating that love, that wish for deepest well-being for ourselves again and again. Many of us have a lot of resistance to this kind of uh, thought towards ourselves. I mean, that's interesting to investigate as well. So we just are gentle with ourselves and we just can continue to wish ourselves well and expand that wish out to others. So as you're going about your day, you may even want to offer that wish to people you encounter in your day silently as you're walking by. Oh, may this person have deepest well-being. May they have happiness, health, and safety. May that person have happiness, health, safety, and deepest well-being. Just silently offering that throughout your day and see how that uh, changes your experience. Okay, so we'd love to hear uh, a few thoughts from you all. Um, how was that? Was that new for you? What was it like? Um, what did you think? So feel free to put it in the chat or just to unmute yourself. Yes, request for the link and we'll, um, we'll send this out with the PowerPoint. And the great thing is there's so many recordings like this that you can find um, on YouTube and online. Um, someone said calming, really appreciate being able to take the time to meditate. Yeah, yeah, it's amazing how even six minutes can calm you down so much and generate some of those just positive emotions. Yeah, and I noticed um, someone said maybe it was too much talking and for other people, the, re the repetition was helpful. And so it's, it's good to notice that there's a lot of these types of loving kindness meditations you can find online uh, with more or less dialogue. Um, so it looks like, uh, looks like people enjoyed it. Um, and we'd invite you just to, to try it out a few times this week. Um, you can use this specific recording or another one, or even just uh, practice on your own, offering those positive intentions to yourself or to other people around you. So we're gonna go on to one other activity just to give you uh, another tool in your toolkit to try out this week. And this one is known as savoring. And um, you know, you might have heard of what's called a negativity bias, or, or just noticed yourself that it's it's very easy to pay attention to the negative things that happen in our life. Um, but sometimes we just get so wrapped up or so busy that we almost don't notice when something good happens. Um, and it's almost like it's over as soon as it happens. And so savoring is a practice to uh, kind of do the opposite of that, to encourage us to attend to and appreciate and really focus and enhance those positive experiences that happen. Um, because there's lots of positive things that happen to us in life. And so it's really an active type of exercise. Uh, it's noticing whenever you experience joy or just delight um, throughout your day. You know, even if it's a short moment, just really paying attention to that feeling of delight and happiness and excitement. And it's really about becoming aware of that uh, anytime you're experiencing pleasure and then just appreciating it, just sitting with it for a moment rather than, you know, having it pass so quickly. Uh, you're, you're focusing on it, you're kind of broadening it, as Hamadri was talking about, and, and letting that happiness, that joy, that delight become part of you and affect you in a positive way. And what's so wonderful about savoring is that you can really savor any experience that makes you feel good. It could be something internal, just a moment you're feeling really good. It could be something external that happens or that you see, um, and tangible or not tangible, it, it doesn't really matter. It's about, you know, what feels delightful for you. And it, it's probably gonna be different, a little different for every person. So we're gonna practice this together um, in a, a breakout room. And we're gonna ask you just to, to get together with a couple people in a breakout room and just practice sharing something good that happened to you with the other people in your group. So just something you're comfortable sharing. It could be a big thing, a small thing, doesn't really matter as long as it was uh, something good that made you feel delight or joy. And we want you just to take a minute to uh, share those details, as many sensory details as you possibly can, and just describe it to your group members. 
And as you're listening to the other people describe, um, try to imagine that that's happening to you, as if it's happening to you, yourself, how you would feel, the emotions you would feel, and the sensations. So we're going to just invite you to take about two minutes a person um, and go ahead out into breakout rooms, and then we'll call you back to discuss. Okay. We'd love to continue to hear your reflections. And we also wanted to ask if anyone has any fast questions about positive psychology, about anything that we've presented. You know, we hope these were some useful tools to kind of just give you a little bit of a taste of what this is all about and maybe encourage you to take some actions in your own life to, to build those positive emotions and really celebrate them.